How to store the master key in a separate location. With the release of Jenkins LTS 2.504.1, we now have the ability to store the master key for your Jenkins controller in a separate location. Why is that important? Well, think about this. Let's say you're doing the right thing and you're backing up your Jenkins home directory all the time. That Jenkins home directory, by default in varlib Jenkins, has everything related to your controller. That also includes the master key. So if I'm saving my master key in my backup, if someone was able to grab that backup from somewhere and restore it, they would be able to get access to anything that that controller was able to get to prior to the backup. However, if the master key doesn't exist, then any of the credentials that were encrypted with that master key are no longer valid and therefore cannot be accessed through the controller that was restored. So as a best practice, typically what you would do is you would remove the master key from your backup, whether that's actually physically removing it or just ignoring it when you're backing up the Jenkins home directory. And then you would store the Jenkins home directory off somewhere else, store the master key somewhere else. And then if you had to do a restore, you'd bring those two things together and that way you would continue on. Well, now what we can do is we can actually relocate the master key from within the Jenkins home directory. That way you can just do a backup of the Jenkins home directory and then have that key living just on that controller. Now you probably still should back it up, but think of it sort of like an SSH key. Not exactly the same, it's a rough analogy, but think of the master key as your private key, and then you also have a public key. I don't want to put my private key and public key together in a backup. What I want to do is I want to make sure I keep my private key private and stored separately away, and keep my public key public. In this analogy, this is where the private key is the master key and the public key is the Jenkins home directory. Again, a very rough analogy, but let's see how it works. So here's where we're starting. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.504.1. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that was connected up using credentials, using a username and password credential. So if we were to take a look at agent one, and let's take a look at the configuration, what we can see here is that we are using credentials of Vagrant. It's a Vagrant username and actually a Vagrant password. Doesn't really matter. This is a very short-lived controller. So if I was to move the master key away and restart this controller without telling it where the master key is, this controller would not come back up because it would not be able to decrypt that username and password to be able to connect up to the agent. So here's what we're going to do in my case. We're gonna take the master key out of the Jenkins home directory. I'm gonna move it into a separate directory, set up all the permissions correctly on that directory and on the file and make sure the right users are assigned. And then we'll modify our systemd configuration to include two new dash D parameters that will tell us where that location is for the master key and then we'll restart. And in theory, what we should see after everything is done is that controller should start right back up and also reconnect correctly to this agent. So let's go ahead and go over into the controller. Let's CD over into varlib Jenkins because that's the location of my Jenkins home. Yours might be different. So understand we're starting within Jenkins home. Within the Jenkins home directory, there is a secrets directory. There's also a secret file, but we're looking at the secrets directory. If we look inside here, what we see is a master key file. So if we were to go ahead and take a look at this master key file, we can see it's just a string of characters and numbers. Again, that's unique to this controller. Let's go up one level here and let's understand the permissions on the secrets directory. So if we take a look at secrets, we can see it actually has a permission of 700, RWX, and then it's all blank for here. So that would be a 700. So the new directory that I want to create, I want to make it a 700 as well. And notice here that we're going to need to have the ownership on this directory that we're creating owned by Jenkins Jenkins. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and go up one level. I'm just going to go up into varlib. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory called varlib Jenkins master key. If we take a look at the permissions on Jenkins, what we're going to see is we've got Jenkins Jenkins is Jenkins. So that's our Jenkins home directory. Here's the new directory we just created, Jenkins master key, but notice it's still owned by root. So we need to change our ownership on this new directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and say schmod 700 on Jenkins master key. What we're gonna see here is that our permission is now correct. We have now 700 on this directory. 
But notice we don't have our ownership correct. We don't have our user and group set. We're gonna hold on making that change for just a moment. So let's go ahead and shut down our controller so we can move everything out safely, get everything permissioned correctly, and then we'll go from there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say system CTL stop Jenkins. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move our master key from our Jenkins home directory secrets directory directly into varlib Jenkins master key, master key. So let's go ahead and just move that file out. Let's verify that real quick. We'll say varlib Jenkins master key, master key. Now I could have renamed master key to something else. You'll see why we can do that in just a moment. We can see that this is correct. Varlib Jenkins master key. If we go ahead and take a look now inside varlib Jenkins secrets, we can now see here that we no longer have a master key within this directory. Remember we needed to change the ownership of that directory, even though our file is correctly owned by Jenkins because we just moved it out. Let's go ahead and do a chown recursive, the dash upper R, Jenkins Jenkins, our varlib Jenkins master key. That way we get the directory and anything inside of it. So that's the reason why we held off on changing the ownership is I wanted to go ahead and get the file in first, and then we'll go ahead and do permissions all at one pass. Now what we need to do is we need to set up two startup parameters for telling Jenkins where that file exists. So I'm gonna say systemctl edit Jenkins. We're gonna go into environment Java ops. So I'm gonna go to the end of this line. I'm gonna add in two dash D values. The first one we can see is Jenkins security default confidential store read only set to true. Now you can look in the documentation to understand what this parameter does. The second one we're setting is Jenkins security default confidential store file. So this is where we're telling it, this is where the file is. So number one, we set it to read only, so it only can be read. And secondly, we tell it exactly, including the file name. Remember, it doesn't have to be master.key. It could be whatever file name you want it to be. You just need to make sure that you specify it with this dash D parameter. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and restart our controller. Now that the controller has restarted, or at least we think it's restarted, let's go ahead and go back into our controller. And what we can see here is that the agent has successfully connected. If we go ahead and take a look at the log, what we're gonna see here, if we scroll back up to the top, we're gonna to see that it launched, and then it was able to make the connection successfully using the credentials. Again, if the master key was not seen, the controller would not be able to grab that vagrant credential that we use to connect up to that agent, and therefore the agent would not have connected successfully. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.